us a little bit about attenuating the inflammatory response. Yeah, dear Chairman, thank you for inviting me to this presentation. Um, inflammation and the inflammatory response. Uh, can I have the slides, please? In the context of surgery in general, or cardiac surgery is a really old story. And although the story is almost as old as cardiac surgery itself, not too much has happened during this time. And um, I'm a strong believer in order to achieve the improvement for the outcome of our patients, it's a multimodal approach. We cannot just look into one aspect. We have to change several things. So inflammatory response, there are several triggers that are important to know that trigger the inflammatory response. On the one hand, there's the underlying disease. Every patient who has coronary heart disease or valve diseases, they have at least a myocardial inflammation, a chronic inflammation, and sometimes in the acute phase, acute myocardial infarction causes also a generalized response. The surgical trauma itself triggers an inflammatory response. We are very aware of that and we're trying to take care of this. The usage, the application of cardiopulmonary bypass in any kind somehow triggers the so-called SEERS, the inflammatory response syndrome, and the ischemia and reperfusion when we set the clamp and release and reperfuse the heart also results at least in a myocardial inflammatory response. So what we, can we do about these? We can try to attenuate the inflammatory response and one, one aspect is the usage of modified extracorporeal circuits that can be minimized, mini pumps. We have we heard a lot about that today and yesterday, so I'm not gonna go further into detail. Minimal invasive access may contribute to the attenuation of the inflammatory response. We also heard this, and in combination with mini pumps, it might even improve more the outcome for our patients. So I'm not gonna go into detail into that. We heard enough about this. I would like to focus on to some other aspects that I think um, are really important. So one thing is the application of specific filters to eliminate cytokines during the CPB time and the pharmacotherapy. This is probably one field that we as surgeons, we neglected this for the longest time. I think there's lots of improvement in order to, to, um, to, to improve the outcome for our patients. So this is something we already know. Cardiopulmonary bypass itself and the cardio, uh, cardioplegic arrest, they result either or together in an inflammatory response of the whole organism. It causes oxidative stress in the heart and during the reperfusion, it causes an ischemia reperfusion injury and regarding the heart, at least it results in myocardial stunning. There are some drugs, some pharm uh, pharmacons that have a specific impact on that and statins, they seem to have a very beneficial effect on our patients. We all know that statins lowering, they're lowering the cholesterol and other lipids in the serum in our patients, but there are other effects that are called, uh, they're summarized under pleiotopic effects. They also have beneficial effects for our patients and specifically the anti-inflammatory anti effects besides anti-thrombotic, plaque stabilization and the improvement of endothelial functions are beneficial for our patients. So we're working on this topic for quite a while with our group and Oliver Leokopoulos, who's, who can't be here today, he started doing some research on this and the first thing he started was doing or performing a meta-analysis looking specifically into patients who underwent a cardiac surgical procedure who had either statins before or no statins before the cardiac surgical procedure. So we could um, identify over 30,000 patients in 19 trials. Um, three, uh, three of these trials were randomized control trials. The majority were cabbage patients or the minority less than 10% were valve procedures. And since all these um, trials looked into the beneficial effects of statins or no statins, the distribution was almost 50-50% and what we could show is the application of the administration of statins preoperatively results in a relative risk reduction of more than 40%. The cardiologists, they went even further and they looked into a recapture therapy. Recapture therapy is a high boost or a high dosage boost therapy immediately before the procedure. And they performed a randomized control trial, the so-called Armida recapture trial, and these almost 400 patients before elective PCI who were already under chronic or under long-term long intake of statins received a high dosage application of or administration of the statins. And what they could show, shown here, is they achieved a reduction of the relative risk for the combined endpoint, myocardial infarction, cardiac death, or redo PCI for more than, or more than, uh, more than 60%. 
And based on this trial design, we designed our own trial for cardiac surgical patients in Cologne. This is the start cabbage trial, which is finished right now. We looked into the high dosage treatment um, with statins in patients who already were under statins and looked for the outcome parameters after 30 days, um, the combined endpoint, cardiac death, myocardial infarction, and stroke. It was initiated by our center and primarily designed for our state, North Rhine-Westfalen. It was funded by the Federal Ministry of Research and Education. The trial design itself was a randomized controlled trial, double-blinded, multicentric. We started with eight centers in our province, but due to very, very slow uh, recruitment of the patients, we added another four high-volume centers. Um, based on the power analysis, uh, the plan was to enroll 2,630 patients, which are enrolled by now as shown here, but you can see it took us seven years to complete the recruitment. So we just finished the recruitment. Based on the, on the not unblinded uh, interim analysis, at least we had no, um, no reason to terminate the, the trial early, and we're hoping after the, prim uh, the, the final analysis that we can submit the, um, the paper in 2020. So these are, this is just to show the trial that we worked on. Another aspect that I started to, um, to mention at the beginning is the Cytosorp filter. For those who are not too fam familiar with this device, it's an adsorption filter that can be connected anywhere into any kind of extracorporeal circulation. It can be just hemodialysis, it can be the cardiopulmonary bypass. Originally, it was developed or invented in Russia to eliminate myoglobin in patients who had a se a severe trauma. Later on, uh, um, they, uh, the company found out that due to the binding and elimination properties, which was around uh, had the sweet spot around 20 kD, it was also able to eliminate other substances from the blood. And so what they found out is all around the, the, um, the molecular weight of around 20 kD, that is spe specifically pro-inflammatory but also anti-inflammatory cytokines were eliminated very, very effectively. The company was taken over by American company, or the product was taken over by American company, and they started releasing it to the well to a broader spectrum. So, in order to to um, to assess whether there is a beneficial effect for our patients, we started a pilot trial. We included in total 300 patients, allocated into three groups: conventional CPB group, the cytosol group was plus filter, and compared to the opcap group, just to find out whether there's a direct influence on the cytokines removal in the bloodstream. So to mention that at the very beginning, it was not powered for any clinical endpoints, just for serum parameters. The inclusion criteria are the typical criteria. So we included only elective cardiac surgery patients who were planned for cabbage surgery, all only adults, and the patient, of course, they had to give informed written consent. And the exclusion criteria were he uh, chemotherapy, steroids, which has already an impact on the cytokine levels or any kind of other immunosuppressive drugs. Homotherapy as well as TNF-alpha blockers and uh, um, predefined or known um, immunodeficiency syndromes. The primary outcome parameters were purely based on the serum parameters and not looking at the clinical parameters. These were downgraded to secondary outcomes. We looked at the stay at the ICU and the total hospital stay, time of ventilation, and the time of catecholamine therapy, as well as the parameters for kidney injury, and we looked into the combined endpoint mortality, myocardial infarction, and cardiovascular, uh, cerebrovascular incidents. So these are baseline characteristics, and I didn't put the p-values here because they were all not sig significant. A very typical patient cohort in our patients, we randomized the 100 versus 100. You might be missing the opcap group due to a very, very slow recruitment in our department where there were no l low number of OPCAP patients. We had to stop these quite early, but when we looked into the, um, into the early results, the, the difference was so huge regarding the serum parameters that it also didn't make any sense to continue this. So these are the intraoperative data of these patients with um, conventional CPB plus the, the filter operation time around three hours. CPB time around 90 minutes. There was a significant difference regarding the, cr um, the cross clamp time, but well, six minutes really is just a statistical or mathematical effect that really didn't have any impact on our patients. Then we looked into the serum parameters, the pro-inflammatory um, cytokines, IL-6, interleukin-6, <laughs> 8, and TNF-alpha, 
what you could see, there was a significant reduction of the expression levels or the release of IL-6 and IL-8 in the cytosorb in the filter group regarding the TNF-alpha. They were just comparable as shown here with no significant difference at any time point. What you're going to also see is it was only a, a quite immediate effect early two to three days after surgery. After five days, all these values went back to the, um, to the baseline. For safety reasons, we also looked into other, um, other, um, other factors in the serum in how far they are affected by the cytosorb filter. We looked into T3 and the cortisol. What we could see is that the filter was also eliminating very effectively T3. It had no clinical signs and it uh, normalized within, um, within the hospital stay. Within five days, um, all the serum levels were normalized. Otherwise, we, um, especially regarding the platelets, because platelets also have the tendency to be eliminated by this filter, we didn't see any um, significant effects um, due to the filter. So regarding the clinical outcomes, we could observe no statistical significant difference in the outcome parameters at the ICU, the catecholamine um, duration and the, the, st uh, the length of ventilation of the ICU stay. However, we could see there's, there was a significant, or uh, it was a significant reduction um, for the first 90 patients and the last, pati last 10 patients. They diminished the statistical significance, but we saw a, um, we, at least a very strong trend in the reduction of infections, and especially in sternal wound infections in the patients who received the filter. So the limitations are quite clear. It's just a pilot study. It was not powered for clinical endpoints. We just, um, just prepared to, to perform the power analysis to go into the randomized controlled trial. The, the question is, or the question why we didn't see such um, a significant effect might be also the CPB time might have been too short to have an impact onto the patient. So the trauma by CPB was not big enough that we could observe an effect by CPB. Further on, um, the company found out that not only the cytokines um, are eliminated, but many, many other substances from the bloodstream are eliminated, including antibiotics and also um, substances that, that, that um, affect the, the thrombocytes. So what we found out is ticarillor, for example, is eliminated. So patients who come in acute phase and are under ticarillor, they receive the filter no matter what in order to control the bleeding early and postoperatively. So to summarize the therapy uh, with the cytosorb, um, so far there's no device-related um, complications. It does eliminate cytokines which are involved in the inflammatory response. The clinical um, recovery or the, the, the clinical recovery seems to be improved. The, there is definitely a incidence, although not reaching statistical significance regarding infections and specifically sternal wound infections, but the hormone levels and other parameters which are um, more <coughs> directing towards the safety of the product, they're mandatory and need to be monitored. Thank you for your attention. A very good presentation. In fact, congratulations because uh, you're showing how really study should be uh, planned and run. My only question is, why didn't you randomize the patient in the last study? I mean, what was the criteria to use this filter or not? No, they were randomized in the pilot trial. They were? They, they were. Okay, yeah, no, excellent. That, that's the way study should be conducted. Can um, I <coughs> sorry. ask one question? Sorry. Please, so you, you, you mentioned about the um, elimination of the grill. Is there any data showing this? You know, because I, they, there was a paper published in um, Annals of Thoracic Surgery about lowering that, but no measurement of the uh, drug level before and after. Only um, lessening of the bleeding. What well, resulted definitely in, in less application of, um, of blood products. So the patients yeah, yeah. were bleeding less. So is there any data specifically measuring the um, drug level going down after filtration? No, we didn't. Uh, no, we, we didn't measure that yet. But um, what has been shown is that the substance is being eliminated by the filter. But we didn't look into the serum parameters. We didn't measure the concentrations. Mm. Right. So we'll get to the next presentation from Professor Sommer from Ghent on 